I was so excited to start this video a different way. I was gonna come onto this video and throw damn near a little party about the fact that our boy Julius Randle was voted into the All Star game. One, clap it up for Julius Randle. But I, 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 these referees. Now I know, I know, I know, and I'm one of the people that say the same thing. Never put a game on the referees for a, a big day, a big moment for Julius Randle. I understand it's just another basketball game, regardless. But for such a big game and a big moment for Julius Randle and the New York Knicks, where the New York Knicks finally get another All-Star since their last All-Star that they traded away, looking like a good idea. And also to have the season that we've been having and just the way they were celebrating it and we have fans back in the same game, the referees still puffed out their chest and decided to take control the way that they took control. I just wasn't a fan about last night's game. It's one thing if the technical fouls that Julius Randle got were warranted, but when you watch it back, Julius Randle did absolutely nothing to get either technical. I will okay the second one, but the first one was out of pure sensitivity. And it really made me mad. It really dampered the mood on such a cool night. We, the loss would have sucked, yes. But still, you know, Julius Randle had himself, he was having himself a solid game. You know, he was being locked down a little bit by Draymond Green. But with that going on, he was still able to, you know, put up a 25-point game, 10 rebounds, 7 assists. Like, he was looking like a well-rounded game, a, a triple-double tickler, if you will. The way that he got those technical fouls and got ejected, like, it just doesn't rub me the right way. The referees across the board were terrible from that RJ Barrett. We're going to talk about it in this video. But, man, I... It really irritated the hell out of me. I'm gonna bring that aside. Let me breathe before we start this video. Let me breathe because Julius Randle is officially an all-star this year. His first ever all-star appearance and he will be an all-star March 7th of this season. I'm excited to see a Nick in an all-star uniform again. Very well deserved. Congratulations to Julius Randle. Really upset that it had to be sullied the way it was, but super happy for somebody who really deserved it. The man who literally flipped his season overnight from last year to this year, um, from putting in the work, putting in, you know, uh, losing the weight, doing everything that he had to do to become a better player and understand the situation of the season in the past you can talk about the coaches and whatnot this 100 percent goes to julius randall and it was very well deserved so shout out to julius randall keep it going all-star come back next season i'm excited about it now let's get into last night's disgusting game run the intro What's going on, CK Cruz Boy CK Two Game? And welcome back to another video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Do not forget to like this video. Nothing to talk about in the beginning. We're getting right into the video of this game that was very, very, very ugly. I want to get the the fun positive to start up. I want to start this video on a high mood because I, I guarantee you, with some of the things I'm going to say in this video, is not going to be a very happy positive video. And I do want to start off with talking about Julius Randle a little bit. The celebration of Julius Randle could not have come at a better time. I don't know if the Knicks planned it this way. I understand, you know, Cuomo changed the rule to allow, you know, stadiums that have uh, 10,000 or more people, 15,000 or more people, whatever the case was, to um, allow 10% of their fans in. I know he recently did that, but we had games in between. I know you got to set up fans and blah, 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 but it seemed like it was, it was scripted so perfectly that we were doing that yesterday night, the night that we would have found out when the also reserves were in and Julius Randle got voted in that same night at the same at the right time so the fans were able to see it and be able to celebrate him live which was a really really cool and really perfectly scripted moment I was really excited about that we saw you know Julius Randle was being celebrated you know he had his little uh, pregame uh, speech and just the thank you to the fans and just that you know welcome back to the fans but also thanking them for you know the support that he's been getting all season we felt you guys love and energy uh, and support it's a great step uh, in moving forward for our city, man. So we appreciate it. We thank the love and support uh, to the frontliners. We know some of you guys are here. Thank you guys for everything you've done. We couldn't do this without you. Go Knicks. You know, his family was in the stands. His mom dropped one of the most adorable videos to surprise him to the point where even Julius Randle, who was very locked into games, he lost his uh, concentration to watch and hear what his mom had to say until Coach Johnny Bryan had to bring him back in. I just want to say that I love you so much and I'm so proud of the son and the teammate that you are. Continue to grind and work hard, putting forth great effort for your team. Just continue to work hard 
and great things are gonna happen for you. Love you. So it was just a bunch of, of really cool moments um, leading into the game and just the, the magic of the moment. It started off fun, you know, Julius Randle was doing a lot of things you could see early on. He was looking like he was trying to get a triple double from the jump. He was moving the ball really well, rebounding it. He was just playing. You could see he had that all-star vibe about him earlier on in the game. But then, you know, the game took place and other things took over. But I just want to shout out Julius Randle for his all-star um, appearance. I'm really excited about it. I know I did it in the whole opening, but I'm, just, I'm really hyped up about it. It's only well deserved, and I really hope that this is the beginning of what Julius Randle is going to be for the rest of his career. So congratulations, Julius Randle. Well deserved. Now let's talk about this trash game. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? I don't know. That's why I had to write it down. There were so many things that I was worried about going into this game. I was excited because I, a lot of people I know, a lot of you guys, subs, and a lot of homies like Richie over at uh, Knicks Media, like a lot of people, shout out to Anthony Donahue, shout out to Greg Armstrong, like so many people that I know and so many people that, you, you know, you guys are letting me know that you're going to the, the, the game with your, your, your parents or whatever it was. There's 2,000 people that were allowed in of the, the normal 19,000 that we have there. I was really excited about that for for you guys i knew i'm not gonna be one of the few because unfortunately i live on the other side of the country so i was excited about that but i was also very very nervous because you got to understand the energy that comes from knicks fans is different from most fan bases in the nba the knicks up to now have been playing really well and now with you know fans coming in the stands for them that are you know hyped off of the season that we've had this year you know they're going to be there loud and, and knicks fan fashion you know you do bad you're gonna get booed you do well they're gonna let you know about it it was going to be a bit nerve-wracking for some of these players on this team i was highly expecting that to happen today now was that the case i don't know i mean you could make jokes that maybe that was the case but i feel like it definitely did play a factor that the team wanted to go out there and put on the same product and impress the fan base that they've been putting on this entire season like that is leading us to this current 15 and 17 season but it just seemed like after that first two the first two quarters i'll give the first half like after about the first half things were just not going to go our way the knicks lose this game with a score of 114 to 106 and i'm sure for those who did not see the game or did see the game but are really scratching their head on why we lost the game to me there's a lot of different reasons you could point at. I know RJ Barrett did not have a great game, one for nine for the field, that's 11%. You know, Julius Randle, who, you know, had a nice stat line, but was eight of 21 for the game, but which is fine, because you know Julius Randle is the, kind, is the person you want to shoot 21 shots a game, which is completely fine. But there's a lot of other underlying issues that I feel like we should talk about in this game, because it just wasn't a very well-rounded end of rotation. It just, it was a weird game from all kinds of missed shots, from uh, the terrible defense in the third quarter. So many different aspects of the game that just came across weird. But the number one thing that I saw was just the differential in play from the starting unit to the bench. Outside of Julius Randle, the starters were not really giving us too much in yesterday's game. They just did not have the juice in last night's game, which was okay because with us having the second unit that we have, Fortunately for us, our second unit brought the juice that we needed when the bench, when the starters do not have the game that they that they had. I mean, if you put the bench unit uh, side by side with the starting unit, the bench played way better than the starters did um, altogether. The only difference is they played way less minutes. Julius Randle gave us, like I said, he had 25 points in 21 shots, but he also had seven assists, 10 rebounds, and he was out there playing really well for the team last night, but you can see there was some instances where it looked like he was trying to get away from the ball. Maybe that has to do with uh, with uh, Draymond Green on him. Maybe that had to do with the return of Kevon Looney. I don't know what it was, but there were some instances where Julius Randle wasn't being as assertive on the offensive end as we are accustomed to. Still three for six from the three-point line, which was another 50% on um, three-point percent his game you know he's been shooting 45 plus percent in some of these games as of late which has been really nice yeah outside of Julius Randle there's not much else that we can get from the starting unit I mean I know you can talk about Alfred Payton because he you know statistically if you want to talk about Alfred Payton he had 20 points but then when you watch the game it wasn't an efficient 20 points and even if you want to stick to the stats statistically it was not an efficient 20 points sure he shot 42 percent but he shot 19 shots and only got 20 points. And like I've always been talking with, with Alfred Payton and the biggest head scratch and the biggest frustration that comes to me with Alfred Payton is all those shots were around the rim. You know, I think there was one mid-range shot that he made. He's not a mid-range, he's not a jump shot shooter. That's just not who he is. So of those 19 misses, two of those were three-point shots 
and then that means that what 17 so that means that the other nine misses were around the rim one of my favorite things was shout out to anthony donahue he put up the best tweet that alfred payton has probably one of the prettiest missed layup packages in the nba and this is my problem like i would normally not have a problem with somebody putting up that many shots and i know we're gonna get us a good amount of points but the thing is He's putting up those shots around the rim and he's missing from point blank. He's missing bunnies and some of them were with contact, but a lot of them weren't. I've been talking about this for almost two weeks now where, you know, Alfred Payton has been playing solid basketball, but at the same time, he should have his percentage be up a lot higher because the majority of his shots are coming from around the rim and he's just missing them or he's just rushing them and they don't go in. So it's hard for me to give him credit for that. He had 20 points off of 19 shots and was a negative 22. It just negates everything else. I mean, you you can talk about the points all you want i know that's what you know then i i i don't want to say this but that's what you know the knicks media is trying to do i know mike breen and clyde frazier like they were you know they're trying to praise Alfred payton for that which is good we if without his 20 points who knows where we would have been i get that but at the same time they weren't they weren't an efficient 20 points Alfred payton somebody that you know should be moving the ball that should be playing the way that he normally plays you know the point guard position he only had four assists last night. I, I feel like Alfred Payton is one, one of the kind of guys that, that should be averaging around five assists a game. You know, I understand it's one assist away, but I don't know. I, I just feel like, like I've always been saying, it's like Alfred Payton, you're going to get one or the other, but you can never get uh, the same thing. It was just frustrating. It, the, he should not have had 19 shots. I have no problem with the eight makes, but at the same time, Alfred Payton is a guy that should be shooting around 12, 13 shots a game. Now, if he was on, that's a different conversation, but he wasn't. He just was not on last night. He had a lot more misses than makes a lot more misses than makes a point a minute is not a good stat in the nba oh, i'm sorry a point a minute is a good stat that, that's not what i meant a point a, a point an attempt is not a good stat in the nba it's just not it's not 20 points and 19 attempts and he had the 20 points because he made his free throws he was four or five from the free throw line so even if you take away your free throws he had less points than he had attempts so i don't know man it's just not a good look i know fans are going to be even more critical and you know they're going to you know call for his head and stuff like that but this is not one of those games that really help. I understand he had 20 points, but you can't have 20 with a negative 22. It's just not the way it's going to be. Matter of fact, the entire starting unit was not good. Reggie Bullock, negative 21. Julius Randle, negative 21. Nerlens Noel, negative 18. RJ Barrett, negative 21. And Alfred Payne, negative 22. Yes, that was on them, but I don't know if it was entirely on them because there's some instances where Tom Thibodeau was just, he was literally just letting them stay out there and get smacked in the head. And I didn't, that was the other thing I was understanding. He wasn't making any adjustments defensively. There was moments where they were just going down the lane. They would get the rebound, go down, score. Get the rebound, go down, score. Get the rebound, go down, start. Stop us, go get, go down and score. And we just let it keep on happening over and over again without making any adjustments. And I didn't understand that. It made no sense to me. Especially when our starting our bench unit was playing as well they did. Because it's literally light and, and night and day when you look at the starters compared to the bench unit. Alec Burks, plus 17. Taj Gibson, plus 10, who was playing a lot of those minutes with the starter unit. Uh, Derek Rose, another person who was playing a lot with the starting unit, was a plus 12. The two rookies, both plus 12, both playing only 13 minutes and 6 seconds. Like, we were getting a great game out of Obi Toppin, and he still got relegated to 13 minutes. I understand that Julius Randle is the guy that is ahead of him, but there could have been instances where he was going in there and playing the center instead of maybe Taj Gibson, some of those instances. Because they played small units. Maybe when Kevon Looney's out there, you can't do that. I get that. But there was instances where they were playing smaller units with Draymond Green at the center. Like, there's so many ways that we could use Obi Top, and I, I think that we're just scared to do it right now, which I understand, you know, we're waiting for him to, you know, get his footing and play a better game. But at some cases, I really feel like we are pacifying the kid, and I'm not a fan of it. Emmanuel quickly didn't have a great offensive game game but a man quickly still was out there you know doing everything else that he could do i mean he only had um the one assist for the game but out there he was doing a solid job on the, the on defense while derrick rose was cooking throughout the entire game he started off the game 100 i know he only ended 6 of 15 another person who had a point in attempt which is not great but at the same time taking 15 shots off the bench that's what derrick rose is supposed to do so i guess i'm gonna give him that pass for that and again a plus 12 derrick rose had a, was, was was all over the court you can see him defensively taking charges getting steals like derrick rose was doing damn near everything there was some shots for him too that was a little bit rushed i wasn't a fan of but at the same time at least he's giving his shots from from deep two for four from the three-point line so it was a, a, a bigger sample size from that they weren't all missed layups like i don't know it was just like i said I, I don't know what else to put it. I'm not, I'm, I, I don't like pointing fingers in situations like this I think it's more of a you need to take the note 
look at the film, move on to the next game. I don't like to point fingers like it's this person's fault, it's that person's fault. I'm not saying that, but I do want to point out the things that I did notice that I wasn't a fan of, which is Alfred Payne taking 19 shots and only having 20 points. I, I, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that, especially with a negative 22. I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that. RJ Barrett was struggling out there. He was uh, absolutely struggling, but he still at least was given it. He gave us 10 rebounds and steal. He's playing solid defense. He did have three turnovers. He fouled out with six fouls. Like it was just a rough game. And speaking of fouls, and that's where we have to talk about the next thing, and that is the uh, the referees. The referees last night were atrocious. They were really really bad and the the play and the call that really put it over for me where i knew like yeah they, they there is something fishy going on was the play where they reviewed the foul on rj barrett and they called it a hip to hip contact i don't know if that's a thing rj barrett was completely vertical but because his hip touched that was i played basketball my whole life that was one that was completely new to me um, so I'm going to have to give that one to the referees for teaching me something new. It seemed to be new for a lot of people on Twitter, but it, it was that. And then, like I mentioned, the two technical fouls that they called on Julius Randle, the referees were being very, very sensitive last night. I, I didn't like it. You know, I, I, I say this all the time, like you see, and I, and I do want the referees to call games fair, but at the same time, it's just, it's common knowledge, it's basketball culture. You see a lot of these teams get, you know, called one way when they're the home team, but the Knicks never get that i've never I, for as long as i've been a knicks fan there's probably been a handful of games where i've seen like oh man referees making some very knicks calls tonight because we're home kind of thing like they're feeding the energy of the crowd but the knicks never get that luckily the foul differential wasn't too crazy it was only five um you know it was 23 for us 18 for them you know we went to the free throw line uh not that many less times than them only two less times than the um, warriors because there were some situations where the warriors were getting terrible calls as well so that's why i'm not putting it solely on the 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 Warriors, but it's just the timing of when the referees decided to go out there and just completely blow the game for us. It was just weird. I hate when referees take control of basketball games. There was a lot of times where you know they were letting the two teams play. You know they're letting going getting let let the teams get away with little you know uh, physical stuff. But then when the Knicks were doing it, they weren't letting them get away with it. That being said, once again it was a game that we lost in the third quarter. Um, the Golden State Warriors came out at halftime and dropped 39, almost 40 points in that third quarter to our measly 20. Six. Um, we had 21 points in the fourth quarter, which led both teams. But at the same time, with just the way things were, we needed more than 21 points to take over that lead. And we ultimately lost 106 to 114. It was a rough loss. We shake it off and move on to the next one. It was unfortunate that, you know, with the first game with our fans back in the stands, Julius Randle being named an all-star, we unfortunately lost that game. But Derrick Rose, too, he was not happy about it. I'm expecting he's probably going to get fined probably today. But something, someone had to say it because it's been going this way the last few games i don't know man i mean if you look back some of rj barrett's missed shots a lot of them were with contact he wasn't really getting to the free throw line very often um derrick rose like i said he talked about the lack of calls going their way because there was times derrick rose was getting hit they weren't getting called on him either like i said they were letting him play physical but only on one side it was a little bit lopsided and here's what derrick rose had to say about that i mean we're pros and um you just i mean i don't even want to bring up um, their name, but um, it just makes it um, hard for you whenever you are already struggling on the offensive end and you're you're driving and you're not getting the same call. So it makes it seem like there's something else that's going on. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. Be that as it may, the Knicks lost the game. Um, it, I can't put it all on the referees. We have to make our shots plain and simple you know referees was part of the situation but it was not the entire situation and i'm not going to be somebody that's going to use the referees as scapegoat last night i almost was there I was very upset with referees you see me on twitter but at the same time i'm not dumb and i know the situation at the knicks they lost that game for themselves as well but what were your thoughts on last night's game did you feel like it was a bit lopsided from the referee side do you feel like it just was a weird energy from the knicks what were your thoughts about the rotations by tom thibodeau let me know your thoughts about everything that happened in yesterday's game let me know if you were in attendance and you know how your experience was being in attendance with you know less fans i want to hear everything you guys have to say in the comment section below but guys if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell do not forget to like this video we got another game tomorrow we'll forget that this game ever happened and we move on to the, <laughs> the next one we got the northern northern california team in attendance with the sacramento kings tomorrow hopefully that's a game that we could turn around and win and act like this last game never happened but let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments below i'm out of here guys i'll see you guys in the next video
Let's get it. Y'all be blessed. See you guys next time. Kings next game, baby. <sighs> Just a frustrating game. Shout out to Julius Randle. I'm out. Peace. Feeling like I won the lotto. Always taking trips with a new chick. Asking where the time goes. Oh. And I wonder if this is all I'll know.